Welcome to Electro Online. Now that we've learned how to solve a system of linear equations in three variables, we're now ready to start solving some word problems. Well, let's try this one. The sum of three numbers equals two, the difference between the smallest and the largest equals negative five, and the sum of twice the smallest number and five times the middle number equals one. Find the three numbers. So here we have three unknowns, and we're trying to solve this problem. So we're going to need three equations. But before we do that, we need to define the three unknowns in, in terms of some variable. So let x equal the smallest number. Then we can let y equal the middle number. And finally, we will let z equal the largest number. And now, in order to solve for these three unknowns, we need to have three relationships in the terms of three equations. That's where the term three unknowns, three equations comes from. If you want to solve for the value of x, y, and z, the three unknowns, you're going to need three equations, three relationships between them. All right, the first thing, it says that the sum of the three numbers equals two. That means we can write that x plus y plus z equals two. So there's our first equation, now we need two more. The difference between the smallest and the largest equals negative five. So the smallest is x and the largest is z, and the difference means we're going to subtract the largest from the smallest, and that is equal to negative five. And then they tell us that twice the smallest, well that would be two times x, plus because it's and five times the middle number, so plus five y, that is equal to one. And there is the three equations, and now we can solve them simultaneously. We're going to use the method of elimination. So what we're going to do here is eliminate the x's using the first two equations. So I'm going to take the first two equations, and I'm going to multiply the second one by a negative one. In other words, I'm going to change all the signs, so when I add the two together, the x's will drop out. So we're going to take equation one, and we're going to take equation two. Equation one, we're going to write as is, x plus y plus z is equal to two. In the second equation, I'm going to change all the signs because I'm multiplying both sides by negative one, so I get a negative x plus z is equal to a positive five. So the second equation, I simply multiply both sides by negative one, so I change all the signs. Now I can add the two equations together. The x's drop out, y plus two z is equal to seven. And there's the first equation with only two unknowns. Now I need one more. So what I can do now is I can add equation one and three together, of course. What I really need to do is multiply the first equation by negative two. And then I take the first and the third equation and I add those two together after I multiply the first equation by negative two and add it to the third equation. So equation one is going to be equal to, and I, of course, I'll need an equal sign here. Multiply everything by negative two, so negative two x, negative two y, negative two z is equal to negative two times two, which is a negative four. Then I add that to the third equation And that becomes 2x plus 5y is equal to 1. So I just take the third equation as is, but now when I add the two together, notice the x's drop out again. I get a 3y minus 2z is equal to minus 3. And there's my second equation, again, with only the variables x and y. So let me repeat those two equations up here. So I get y plus 2z is equal to 7, and I get 3y minus 2z is equal to negative 3. And luckily, notice that here I have a plus 2z and a minus 2z. If I now add those two equations together, I can now eliminate the second variable. So I end up with 4y, the z's drop out, is equal to 4, divide both sides by 4, and I get y equals one. Y being the middle number, I now know that the middle number equals 
one, but I still need to find the other two. Well, here I have an equation where I can plug in the value for y to solve for z. So I come up here and I can write y plus 2z is equal to 7, but since y is equal to 1, I can replace the y by that value 1. So I get 1 plus 2z is equal to 7, move the 1 to the other side, 2z is equal to 7 minus 1, 2z is equal to 6, divide both sides by 2, and z is equal to 3. And there I have my second number, and I can plug that in here and go, this is equal to 3. Now I need to find x. So I can go back to my original equation, equation number 1. I'll repeat that equation over here, equation number 1, and I get x plus y plus z is equal to a positive 2. So now I plug in the value for y and the value for z that I got here and here. So I can write that x plus 1 plus 3 is equal to 2, x plus 4 is equal to 2, x is equal to 2 minus 4, or x equals negative 2. And there's the third value for, for, uh, that I'm looking for, so x equals negative 2, and that would then become the smallest number. Of course, I want to make sure I did this correctly. So, does it meet what we have over here? The sum of the three numbers equals 2. So 3 plus two, 1 is 4, minus 2 is equal to 2, so that checks. The difference between the smallest and the largest number equals negative 5. So minus 2 minus 3 is indeed negative 5. And finally, twice the smallest number and 5 times the middle number equals 1. So twice the smallest number, that would be negative 4. 5 times the middle number would be plus 5. Negative 4 plus 5 is indeed 1. And so all three conditions seem to match. And therefore, I'm pretty sure I got the right values for x equals negative 2, y equals 1, and z equals 3. And that is how it's done. Would it be easier to find x using equation 2? Um, yes, it would be. <laughs> the reason why I picked the first one is because they all had a coefficient of 1 in front of it. I like that, but you're right. I could have picked the second equation. I'm also averse to using negative numbers. So if I have an equation with only positive numbers, I tend to gravitate towards the equation with just positive numbers. Easy. <laughs> All right. If I wanted to find x using the second equation, I could have used <laughs> x minus z is equal to negative 5, and z was equal to 3. So x minus 3 equals negative 5. Move the negative 3 over x equals negative 5 plus 3, and so x equals negative 2. So yes, you would have gotten the exact same answer in one less step. You're right. <laughs>